Hey, hey, legends. Happy Monday morning. I've been wearing a beanie all morning. <laughs> I'm just taking it off of my hair. <sighs> Couldn't be possibly crazier if I tried. So, Monday morning, change of scenery. I'm in my lounge room on my couch. Um, meant to be the first day back at school, but my little one has a curriculum day today. Yeah, awesome for curriculum days. Golly, golly, gosh. So that's okay i'm rolling with it i didn't i did know it was happening so don't worry i wasn't one of those morning one of those mums hi marie how are you <coughs> excuse me we did just drive past school and see plenty of families um learning this morning that today was a curriculum day so i do feel like mum of the century that i actually knew that in advance but yeah this hair is crazy Anyway, I hope you guys had a cracking weekend. Mine was super duper fun. Um, had a really, really nice balance of family and friends and downtime and all that kind of jazz. Uh, I feel like I've been saying that more and more, which mess must mean I'm doing something right. But um, I have uh, three kids hiding upstairs who are on their best behavior. Hey, Amy, hey, Kristen, um, who have been officially briefed I'm doing a live video, so be quiet. So if you hear people, you know, flying around, you know that I'm not murdering people. <laughs> There's not people hiding in my attic. It's just crazy kids. Um, <coughs> so I was texting my bestie last night, Carly, and she was like, what are you up to? And I was like, oh, I'm preparing um, for my Facebook Live tomorrow morning. And I'm just trying to decide how deep a topic I want to go, go for. And she was like, what's your topic? And I told her... <laughs> And she came back and said, what's the alternative topic? <laughs> I was like, oh, she goes a bit heavy for a Monday morning. I was like, okay, good. But I did want to have um, a bigger conversation today beyond just business and beyond just, um, what's the word? You know, like the marketing stuff. I, I talk a lot about the mindset side of, piece, side of things and that stuff is uber important like a billion times more important than the marketing stuff to be honest um and i just I'm, I'm trying to piece together a few little things at the moment in my own head and in my own universe and i just thought talking you guys through it or vocalizing some of it with you guys might help and um you can give me some feedback or some guidance on it as well um so last sunday a week yesterday i had a bot just a crazy person oh, no. I'm assuming a crazy computer, to be honest, post um, on one of my, on about six of my posts, actually, they, he, she, whatever, went back and um, liked about six of my posts and used the volcano emoji um, about 10 times. So I got all these notifications with all these volcanoes in it. And I was like, oh, how weird. I didn't even know there was a volcano emo emoji at all. Um, and how ridiculous. I just had one of those like, God, this is ridiculous moments. No problem. And then my dear friend Catherine um, sent me a, almost an SOS message on Monday um, with a podcast link saying, oh my God, you have to watch this, have to listen to this, it's going to rock your world, it's going to set your world on fire, it's going to, everything's going to fall into place, check it out. And I did, and it, and it did, um, and I've had some really deep kind of over-analytical thoughts ever since. Uh, and again, in that podcast, there was a metaphor about volcanoes. And I was like, this is so weird. Uh, and in the background to all this, I've been booking a girl's trip to Bali and talking about the ash cloud, a volcano reference, uh, and working through what airline we're going to fly and all that kind of jazz because of what the volcano might do if it erupts. So when I was doing my life coaching training, um, they were really, really big. So I'm a qualified, a professional professional, qualified, whatever. I'm a life coach. Um, I thought I wanted to get into life coaching and I changed my mind. So I pivoted and ended up in business coaching, which is a far better fit for me. Um, but when I was doing my training, they harped on and on about there's no such thing as a sign. Um, everything happens for a reason and this whole like, it must have been a sign. But, um, and I kind of fall halfway between there are signs that everything does happen for a reason. But last week being bombarded with these volcano references, I was like, this is too weird. Uh, and I have since done um, some research on volcanoes, <laughs> would you believe? Um, and I was listening to this podcast last week with Mia Friedman and Glennon Doyle about the metaphor of women being volcanoes. Now, bear with me. I know that sounds crazy, but 
it really struck a chord for me or with me, whatever, and I've been thinking about it ever since. Um, so there are two types of volcanoes, and I will keep the science lesson quick, don't worry. Um, the first being the dormant ones that haven't erupted or haven't exploded for a thousand years and they're just lying dormant and everyone kind of forgets about those ones because they're, the, they're not the very risky ones. <coughs> and then there's the active volcanoes are the ones that are wildly spewing lava over all of us um, or have a much higher propensity or you know a far risky that riskier that they're about to do that <laughs> Marie this is awesome I love this already <laughs> I feel I hope I feel like a bit of a crazy person even saying these things out loud but I don't know it just has been sitting with me so I just thought I would talk through it <laughs> and again I just feel like a bit of a crazy person right now, but I'm, go I'm gonna roll with it because I really, 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 if I reflect on the last kind of 12 or 18 months of my own life, hi Lauren, hi exploding volcano emojis. <laughs> if I reflect on the last 18 months of my life, um, there have honestly been the biggest 18 months ever. So aside from having kids, and I feel like I say that all the time, it's like, it was the best day of my life, apart from when I had my children. So taking kids out of the equation, the last 18 months have been the biggest of my life. And I say that for a number of different reasons and lots of different stuff has influenced or impacted or um, happened to me to make that, make that true, make that comment real, make that comment true. But if I reflect on where I was at two years ago, and some of you met me two years ago, so it's a good insight into where I was at, I was absolutely, um, I don't want to say I was a volcano because that would be too crazy, but I was one of those nearly active volcanoes. So I had been lying dormant for a very, very long time, um, dead on the inside, like cold, hard, nothing going on on the inside. I was just this big mass that was doing my thing day to day, in the routine, day in, day out, just ticking along doing, not nothing, but just living, I was just surviving. Um, and then there was something happening kind of two years ago and lots of different things impacted it or brought it to life that started that fire back in my belly or started that lava bubbling up. And it wasn't a positive fire in my belly. Um, it was a really negative, my head's gonna explode, the top's gonna blow, I'm gonna spew lava over everybody if, I, if you're not careful, um, dangerous kind of thing. <laughs> oh, Ned. You've joined at the most critical of moments. Hey, hey, buddy, it's nice to see you. I'm having a crazy conversation about volcanoes. It's probably not the best life for you to listen into because you think that I've lost my mind, but I totally haven't. Um, so, yeah, so two years ago, I the fire in me inside was coming back to life, I guess, and I was walking around with this pressure pushing down from the external and internal universe and this... Um, bubbling, boiling hot lava inside, ready to explode or violently like ruin the world, I guess. And I know all of that is a little bit dramatic, but that's how it felt. And I was doing my best day in, day out, I was spending a lot of time with Mr. McCarran, uh, desperately trying to keep a hold on all of that and desperately trying to simmer down the fire inside me or put the lava back or put the fire out or whatever it might be um, to just try and avoid that emotional explosion or that um, overwhelming release that I really, really needed to lean into and address. And the universe, the world, my mind, whatever it might be, obviously acknowledged that this was all happening and short of having a major, major breakdown, um, I did lean into it and I was forced to lean into it and address a lot of the shit that was going on that was forcing that lava or that internal um, turmoil to happen. And the reason why that turmoil was there in the first place is because I had so many unaddressed not issues because I'm not a complete basket case, but there was so much going on in my life that I hadn't addressed or that I just neatly packaged up in a little corner and put back in its box and gone, oh yeah, that, you know, I sorted through that, that's fine, no problem. But if I'm really honest with myself, there were shitloads going on that I hadn't addressed and that was sitting in there feeling really uncomfortable, um, feeling unresolved, um, and I was feeling really lost and isolated and overwhelmed by all of it. Hence, there was this, uh, and I'm grabbing desperately onto my tummy because this is where it all used to sit. 
hence why it was just there bubbling away. And the longer I was aware of it and the longer that I sat with it and didn't address it, the more I could feel it kind of bubbling up like lava out of, you know, out of a volcano. And I had a lot of fear associated with all of that stuff. Um, fear that when the top did blow and when I did get to a point where I couldn't hold any of it together anymore and then it did explode on out, I was really, really scared about what the ramifications or the implications were going to be um, to my family. Like, what, what was I going to say? What was I going to do? Was I going to lose my mind? Was I going to lose the plot? Was I suddenly going to be an awful mum, partner, lover, friend, all of that sort of stuff? Um, as well as, you know, was I going to lose my job? And was I, like, there was so much going on that I was scared of. And it was all anchored from a place of fear. Um, and I was reading like a billion books a day and consuming podcasts and blog posts like No Man's Business, whilst also upskilling heaps on the outside, trying to get my head around where I was at and what was going on. Carly, I didn't take your advice. I'm talking about volcanoes. <laughs> I talked about you early at the very beginning of this that you warned me not to do this on a Monday morning and I ignored you, but I'm rolling with it. Just go away, drop out if you don't want to listen to my volcano speech. Um, so I was upskilling my pants off. I was desperately trying to understand how I could put the fire out, how I could um, stem that overwhelming fear that was absolutely consuming me. And fear was at the heart of every. Um, it was at the fit, it was at the heart of where I was at, at at that particular moment. And every decision and every moment of every day was coming from a place of fear. I was too scared to do this. I was too scared to do that. I didn't know how to move forward with this in fear of X, Y, and Z. I didn't want to leave the house because I feared what people would think of me. I didn't want to admit that I didn't have the answer or I didn't want to admit that I was ready to change my career path or I didn't want to admit that some people on a friendship level shouldn't be in my world anymore because they weren't constructive, healthy relationships for me or whatever it might be. It was just all fear, 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 fear. And hence, I felt like this freaking massive volcano. And all of that was stemmed in fear as well in the sense that when this top blows off and I am edging closer and closer to the top blowing off, um, I'm shit scared about what's going to happen. And I'm shit scared that the universe is going to, you know, catapult me into the middle of nowhere and I'll be stuck on an island for the rest of my life and that my family will leave me and I'll have no friends and I'll be alone. Fear, 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 fear. Like I was so consumed by fear. I didn't do you listen to me anyway. Um, and that was a freaking awesome, uh, aw awful, not awesome, freaking awful feeling to be completely consumed by fear. And I knew I had to do something about it, but I didn't know what to do about it. I didn't know who to talk to about it. I didn't know where to start. I didn't even know what to do, to be honest. And that spiral, 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 catastrophizing, didn't know how to get out of the, the cycle that I had started or the cycle that I was in. And throughout all of this mindset stuff and all of this um, self-discovery kind of stuff, my lava or my volcano or my top, whatever you want to call it, it was just edging closer and closer to the point of exploding. And I was, um, and that's where the metaphor really hit home for me when I was listening to all of this stuff come to life last week. Hey, Chrissy. Um, was it, it I, I was absolutely a walking talking volcano <laughs> i know that sounds nuts but when a volcano erupts it spews out this hot toxic deadly poisonous lava and that's how i felt that i was that's that's what i saw my future or my really near future ending up being i was gonna explode and say things and do things that i didn't want to do and that i was I didn't know how to address or that was going to have massive impact or a massive implication on those around me. And I didn't know how to put the fire out and I didn't know how to say those things in a more constructive way. Hence, I walked around feeling like a fairly hideous person. Um, so all of that kind of took me to the edge. And there's a lot of um, metaphors and um, psychology 
written about sitting at the edge of a volcano. Um, you either walk back down or you jump in. Um, and I talked to one of my clients quite a bit about sitting on the edge and she gets to the edge of the cliff and she just sits there. She's got, I'm, sure, I'm really confident she's not gonna jump, but one of her options is absolutely to jump and not in a um, suicide kind of way, but just kind of like that, that sense of freedom. Or the other option is to turn around and keep, you know, head down, bum up, getting your shit happening. Um, and one of my really, really good friends did pass away last year and he did commit suicide. And that was one of the really, really big turning points for me that made me realize sitting on the edge of the volcano or having this volcano inside me was not constructive and it was not helping me live my best life or be my best, um, the best version of me. And, um, it's his anniversary in a couple of weeks and I'm freaking out about how I'm going to deal with that. Hence why I've started this over analytical phase <laughs> at the moment. End of finance year, I do a lot of um, analytics or I look back a lot on what I've done in the first half of the year, on how my business is performing, on where I'm at with my personal goals and all of that um, is bubbling up inside me. And then last week where I kind of shed light or had all these volcano stuff happen, happen um, or I started to be aware of this metaphor of the volcano, I was like, oh, this actually makes so much sense. Um, and rather than looking at it at a, from a negative perspective and kind of going, oh, shit, I can feel some of that stuff coming back and I can feel that uncomfortable fear creeping back in. I'm really, really scared about what's how I'm going to cope in the next couple of weeks. Um, rather than sitting in that fear and being overwhelmed by it, I'm now at a place where I feel strong enough to lean into it. And yeah, it's gonna be really, really uncomfortable for a little while. I don't know, I'm hoping that's just a short period of time. But at the same time, all of the mindset stuff and all of the training and all of the conversations that I've had over the last um, couple of years, have put me in really good stead to be able to cope and survive and thrive in that situation as well. And I have no doubt that I'm going to get through it and I have no doubt that I'm strong enough to get through it. But um, all of that's come from a place of being able to be comfortable with that fear and to address that fear and lean into the fear. Um, and I'm not going to harp on about Tony Robbins, but I found out yesterday that one of my clients is going to Tony Robbins in September and I instantly got goosebumps um, just a because it's going to be the best thing ever for her based on where she's at and what she's trying to achieve and all that sort of stuff. And B, uh, it took me back to when I was there and I walked into that room knowing I had to make some really massive, like freaking massive changes in my life. Um, I'd already started on that journey a little bit. Greg had passed away um, oh, maybe six weeks beforehand and I'd started to lose some weight and I'd started to feel better about myself, but I still had a really long way to go. But I walked into that room knowing that I had some massive changes um, to, ha to be made, whatever, and I walked out having walked on fire, <laughs> knowing that I can take on the world and knowing that fear is not going to dominate um, my life and not going to dominate where I'm at. And I talk to my clients every single week, nearly every single one of my clients, not directly about fear, but about um, self-belief, self-love, self-worth, and being comfortable with who you are and where you are today. And ultimately for all of the, com all the people and all the conversations I have, it comes back to asking for help and knowing that your network is there for you and knowing that there are people out there for you to support you and to love you through the good, the bad and the ugly. And two years ago, I felt unbelievably isolated and alone. Poor, not gonna cry. And I didn't believe that there were people out there to support me and to love me and who were gonna still be there for me when you have some of those conversations and when you start saying some of those things, you do feel like you're a crazy person and you do feel like people are gonna judge you. And I'm, I'm positive that there are some people that did judge me when I started to have some of those, I'm not feeling very good about where I'm at in life or I need to make some changes or I'm not happy with who I am or whatever it might be. It's like, you know, when somebody says to you, um, oh, I'm just having an ugly day and their natural response is, no, 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 you're beautiful, don't be silly, da 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 It's like, 
their automatic response is just to shower you in compliments and to, to remind you that you're amazing when really deep down you know that you're not in an amazing place right now and you need them to say, I'm sorry you feel that way, how can I help? And I guess my message to all of you is that there are lots of people out there to help all of us and you just have to ask and you just have to put your hand up and say, I need some help. Bugger. Um... So, oh, <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. Yeah, so if nothing else, I want you to know that there are people out there that, up to that you can ask for, for help. And it's so, 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 so important that even in those dark moments where you're feeling like the worst person in the world and you feel like you're a volcano... <laughs> which is where my whole metaphor came from. Catherine, I'm blaming you. You're not here, but I know you're going to watch this later. And I'm completely blaming you that you've got to ask for help and you've just got to start having some of those conversations and start um, shining light on some of the self-awareness that you're not in the best place that you want to be and that you want to get out of it. And that's where I got to when I walked into that room at Tony Robbins um, <clears throat> was acknowledging that I'm not where I want to be. And I, did, and I didn't know how to move forward through it, but I was there subconsciously with my hand in the air saying, I need some help. And I was asking a billionaire um, motivational speaker for help, <laughs> which in hindsight was a fucking awesome thing to do because it helped. And I got there and I did a shitload of mindset work and I walked on fire and I came out the other side realizing that I'm a lot stronger than I give myself credit for. And that there are, I came back and had some really hard conversations with a lot of people and I went through a hell of a lot of self-development and um, mindset work, which, you know, it's a work in progress. Like we're all a work in progress. We're still ticking along. I'm still working through all of that stuff. Um, but I am stronger and I am better for it and I am a much better person for it. And I can now confidently say that I am not... I'm not a volcano, like I'm not about to explode my tops. I'm not walking around every day desperately trying to put that lava, push it back down inside and I'm not living in fear that my top's about to explode and I'm going to spew all this lava out and kill everybody around me. Chrissy, I needed you a week before last and you were there. Oh, love you lots, girl. I'm happy to sit and have cocktails with you whenever you need. Carly, don't worry, I'm crying with you. <laughs> oh, don't. <laughs> That's terrible. I needed to hear this, thank you. Oh, I'm really, yeah, I'm... I was a little bit nervous that I was going to sound like a basket case and being a business coach, I feel like there's this extra, or a life coach as well, there's this extra pressure on me, um, which I put on myself just in from a professional perspective that I am meant to have my shit together and that I'm meant to be the strong one and I'm meant to be the one that's always, you know, stoic and strong and all the rest of it. And 90% of the time I absolutely am. <laughs> But I'm human as well and we've all got shit going on and there is so much stuff going on behind closed doors, not my clo like well, everybody's closed doors, that um, you've just got to remember that we're all human sometimes and that we all need a cuddle or a cocktail or um, an ear, like some someone to listen to you. So... And I didn't feel like I had that two years ago and over the last two years... Um, I couldn't be prouder of the progress that I've made. I was um, watching, I'm pointing to my television, which is over there. I was watching the World Rowing Cup Championships yesterday that were being held in Switzerland where I raced um, a thousand years ago now in a previous life. And I was like, oh, I'm so sad that I wasn't able to continue my rowing career, but I'm also really proud that I actually got there in the first place. And I was thinking about what I've achieved in the last 12 months or 18 months really. And it's bigger than bigger than anything that I ever thought was ever going to be possible. Um, so in the last 12 to 18 months, aside from having kids, because that's the, meant to be your biggest achievement, and of course, creating and nurturing humans is, outside of that though, um, from a selfish perspective, let me be selfish for 10 seconds, um, I've lost 40% of my body weight which is a pretty big achievement within itself. Um, I have fallen back in love with myself, partly because of the weight loss and partly, mostly because of the mindset piece. Um, and both of those things attached to one another has helped me open myself up um, 
be far more vulnerable like this moment for example and therefore because I have been more open and because I have been more vulnerable and kind to myself and to those around me um, I've created or had some of the most uh, or formed some of the most amazing relationships and friendships with people that I never ever ever thought was possible um, and if I list my closest nearest and dearest the people I would die for right now on a piece of paper most of those people I didn't know two years ago uh, which sounds bananas to so many people who don't understand the small business world or the personal development space, but I feel like the progress I've made over the last two years has opened me up to so many more opportunities and relationships and friendships that I ever, ever, ever thought possible. And all of that is because I have been in a better place and I have been more comfortable with myself and more vulnerable with myself and with those around me. And I've put myself out there and I've had some of those really uncomfortable, weird conversations. And there's a few people on the line now that I've had those conversations with where you're like, I really like you. Could we like hang out a little bit more and you have this kind of, I know we're business friends, but I would like to be your friend friend and just being uncomfortable enough to kind of go, oh, let's have a coffee sometime that's not a paid coffee or not a professional coffee. It's like a drink that we catch up and be friends in. Even some of those funny little conversations that you have where you're like, I'm putting myself out there. I am, I'm saying to you that I would like to be your friend or I'd like to get to know you a bit better or whatever it might be. That's really scary and it's really scary for a lot of people who don't have a network or don't have um, people to lean on or people to, to um, reach out to and I'm not going to name and shame you but there are a couple on the line who in the last 12 months have realised that there is this small business community or there is this group of women out there who are there for them and who are equ feeling equally as say equally as isolated or alone but who are in a very similar situation and who are here to support and love and care for one another and you just have to lean into that and be aware of it and be comfortable enough to go oh hi who are you can we catch up sometime or what's your story here's mine do we have anything in common is there common ground for us to you know keep chatting about or whatever it might be and that that kind of moment where you're like oh Oh, I'm not alone there are people out there you just have to put yourself out there and lean into it is a pretty powerful moment where I've had lots of clients shared lots of tears in that space where they've realized that they're not crazy for thinking the thoughts that they're thinking and they're not crazy for admitting that it's a bit hard or that they're not sure what's going on or that they're uncomfortable about how to move forward or whatever it might be I'm sorry I'm being hopeless at my messages and to always be kind to everyone. Yes, yes, Kristen, so true. Like, it's very, very quick and very easy to judge people when you see the surface stuff that's going on and you see the stuff they're saying or that they're doing and you don't necessarily agree with it. And that's, it's. I think it's probably human instinct for us to instantly go, oh, well, she's crazy, what's going on there? But no one knows what's going on behind um, closed doors. So coming at it from a place of kindness and a place of genuine love and acknowledging that we are all human and that we are all doing the best that we can do. Um, and rather than judging them and saying, oh, she sounds like a crazy person or what the hell, she doesn't have her shit together, asking, are you okay? Or leaning in and saying, how can I help? Or I understand that things aren't great or whatever it might be. Like how much better do you feel as a person for being the one that's there for them and how much better do they feel knowing that you are there for them like it's, it has to be kind you have to be kind um Corinne sorry I'm having I'm, are you in my brain <laughs> am I in your brain I'm not but this volcano metaphor or whatever it might be is if nothing else a sign from the universe for you that you are not alone my friend um, and that we are, there are always going to be times in our lives, universe goes like this, where we do feel like a walking volcano, but rest assured, please know that there are people out there to help. And I think that's my biggest, 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 biggest insight into all of this, um, is that there are people out there to help and you just have to ask for it and you just have to feel a little bit uncomfortable asking for it if that's where you're at and that's okay. And 
it might, you don't necessarily have to pay a professional to ask for help either. It doesn't, you don't have to admit that you want to go and see a doctor or you need to see a psychologist or whatever it might be. It might just be a girlfriend or it might be a business contact or it might be someone online or it might, you know, it could be a billion and one different people, different people, whatever. You just have to ask for help. Um, and start to take those small steps forward and it's not and I think that's what the hard part for me was is that I was searching for the answer at the end and I was looking I wasn't taking my own advice and I was really really aware of the crap situation that I was in and I was desperately seeking for the answer um, I was like how am I going to get to the end what does the end look like when really what helped me move forward my arm's breaking off because i'm holding my phone what helped me move forward was just taking those baby steps forward and just starting starting freaking small and just saying to yourself or to your loved ones or to your girlfriend or to whoever it might be that i'm probably not where i want to be or i think i need some help or i'm having these thoughts or do you ever feel like x y and z and lots and lots and lots of talk about suicide um in the big wide world at the moment and lots of talk in my network as well and i've really struggled with a lot of those conversations just because of my own personal experience um not with me personally but with my dear 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 friend um he asked for help and it wasn't enough and he i don't know whether he didn't write that ask the right person for help or the people weren't there for him and i wasn't there for him and i i do carry a lot of guilt that i'm working through in relation to that situation but all of us you just have to ask for help and if you don't get the help help that you need from the first person move to the second person move to the third person keep asking for help or keep having those conversations and you just have to start small um and i spent a long time desperately seeking for like desperately looking for the silver bullet or striving for the end um when i just had to start a little bit smaller and take those baby steps forward and as i started taking those baby steps um like in business when you set business goals like personal goals whatever it might be you do naturally build momentum and you do prove to yourself that okay i got from a to b how do i get from b to c and how do i get from c to d and so on and so forth and all of a sudden you're off and racing and you're building momentum um and that does so much for your self-confidence and so much for your self-worth and reminds you that you are loved and that you are capable of getting through this shit no matter how big or small it is and i'm talking i'm talking big stuff here like I, i'm and all of these all of this conversation can be related back to teeny tiny little decisions that you're trying to make or much smaller conversations or topics that um than suicide and death and all that sort of stuff and i don't say all that to be dramatic or big or any of that sort of stuff it's just what i'm trying to work through at the moment on a personal level um i am fine <laughs> rest assured it's just i've got a couple of really big weeks ahead of me and this whole volcano thing is I think hit me just at the right time um hence why i wanted to have a conversation with you guys today so uh i know that this topic and that this particular facebook live is a little bit different for esshq um but i think it's really important that we start to acknowledge that there are much bigger things happening or going on in all of our lives um and that we have to be there for one another um and that a lot of that comes from a pl from a place of needing to slow down and acknowledge and support your loved ones around you and even not necessarily your loved ones even the ones that you see online that you think well, i'm not quite sure where they're at or i'm not quite sure how they're doing or i haven't checked in on them for a while or whatever it might be um i it's just really really important that you slow down enough ever so occasionally to check in on your loved ones and the ones that aren't as loved not the ones you hate but the ones that you don't even know as well because they're probably the ones that need you the most um hopefully your loved ones know that you love them and that you're always there for them but the ones that are kind of that next level out or that that next little circle not the inner inner circle but the next circle out there probably the ones that need you more who are a little bit scared or a little bit frightened or a little bit too nervous to reach out to you um and you'll be surprised at how much of an impact you can have when you do slow down, listen to your inner voice, listen to that inner volcano that's bubbling away. What's it telling you? What do you need to do? What do you need to address? Because parking that shit and putting it in the cupboard and hoping that the cupboard stays locked for forever is not the solution. 
I know, shock horror, sorry, but um, you've, you can't leave it smouldering. You can't leave it bubbling away in the background. You have to be brave and be uncomfortable and lean into it and be a bit shit scared about all of it. Um, God, holy hell, I was. I remember some of those early conversations that I had with people when I was like, oh, I'm not feeling so good about the world. And they're like, what do you mean? You're the most confident, put together person that I know. And I'm like, yeah, I'm really not in here. I'm really not. And I'm starting to feel X, Y, and Z. Um, and that was really scary. And it was it fear. Like I was absolutely dominated by fear. So how can, who can you ask for help, I guess, I don't even know what my catch cry of the day is. I didn't think about my call to action at the end of this enough. I was like, if I can get to the end, I'm winning. Um, but the, rest assured, there are a bazillion people in this small business population, in the big wide world, in your personal network, wherever it might be, who are there to help you. So um, I don't even say all of that just from a like suicide, depression, anxiety perspective, just on an everyday basis. If you need help with anything, mindset, marketing, wherever you're at in life, you're feeling stuck, you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling lonely, whatever it might be, there are a billion people out there who would be more than willing to help if you can be brave enough to ask for help. So, <coughs> excuse me, I hope this week you can open your mind a little bit, listen to the lava. Maybe that'll be my catch cry at the moment. Listen to the lava. Uh, and lean into some of that uncomfortableness and ask for help. And you don't have to send them an email or call them and say, hi, I need help. You just need to start with those baby steps and start that conversation and start edging forward. Um, because the second you move from A to B, you will understand how you get to C, how do you get to D, so on and so forth. And that momentum and that self-confidence and that belief that you can get through this will be there and will continue to spiral or will continue to um, accelerate and you'll soon realize that we're all freaking strong human beings that um, with a little bit of kindness and a little bit of courage really can take on the universe so how did i do <laughs> i don't know if you know still on the line carly <laughs> I know you strongly encouraged me to go with topic B and I ignored you, girlfriend. <laughs> anyway, I'm around all week. I'm in and out of the office. I'm on the road a little bit. So um, jump onto stories and watch the adventure of ESS HQ. There's some fun stuff happening this week, actually. Um, but if nothing else, uh, please reach out and ask for help or ask me on who else you could ask or whatever it might be. But just know that I'm here to listen and help even in any way. That I possibly can. Um, I'm not always the right person for the job, professionally, personally, whatever, but um, I've got plenty of experience. I'm not a professional, but plenty of experience with this mindset stuff and plenty of life experience that I can draw from. Um, and if nothing else, just start the conversation and I can point you in the right direction or can help you get to the next letter of the alphabet. Listen to the lava. I quite like that. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I did not. I just said it was heavy. You do. <laughs> it's okay. I'll, I'll save topic B for next week. Uh, so have a great week. Um, I hope I haven't pulled you back down to too many rungs on the ladder this week, starting Monday morning with a deep and heavy topic. But if nothing else, I just thought it was important to remind everybody to ask for help. Now, sorry, Sarah, who'd have thought I'd listen to a biz chat while I'm helping with my choices in my... Oh... <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I guess that's part of it, Sarah, is the connection between the biz world and your personal world. I have this conversation a lot with my clients, actually, is that you can't, you can't clearly define this is the business world and this is the personal world in their two separate universes. There's a huge overlap between the two. Um, and a lot of the conversations I have with my clients are actually about personal stuff rather than professional stuff. Because if you're not feeling um, great in your personal life or you're not feeling like you're where you should be or you're not feeling amazing or whatever it might be, that has an absolute direct impact and a direct connection with what's going on in your business or your or vice versa so um if there's big stuff happening in your personal life of course it's going to be having an impact on your biz life just because of that natural connection when we're human beings like 
you know, we wear different hats, but at the end of the day, we all have the same heart or we all st sit in the middle on the same place. So um, if there's heaps of stuff going on in your personal life, yes, that will be having an impact on your biz life. It's connected. It's, you know, it's here. It's you're the common link between the two. So of course there's going to be a connection there. So um, sounds like lots of good, lots of big stuff happening. So if you, if you need to talk about any of that stuff, just let me know. Um, but there's also a million people out there um, I'm sure who would be who would love to listen and would love to help. Have a great week, guys. I am here if I can help in any way, shape, or form. Happy, happy Monday. I'm back at school tomorrow. Well, my kids are back at my little one is back at school tomorrow. Day one curriculum day today, the joys. But um, for the Melbourne mums, anyway, I'm hopeless at my interstate um, school holiday stuff. But Melbourne mums, I know a lot of you have gone back to school today, and I'm insanely jealous. But we made it. Another school holiday is done and dusted and I'm still here smiling to tell the tale. <laughs> Have a great week, guys. I'll check in with you later. Ciao.